please be aware that the following podcast may contain adult themes and adult language. Also, this is just for fun, and these are just our opinions. We're not experts, just really, really emotionally invested. รายการต่อไปนี้ And welcome back to that such BL, the podcast that gives you your fix of Thai BL with a scoop of Asian dramas, a dash of Western queer media, and a sprinkling of controversial opinions. I'm your host G, and I'm your other host E, and we're on episode six. six. Now. Oh wow. my gosh, six over halfway through. So we we have oh literally like maybe five minutes ago we discovered this amazing um, teaser trailer for Om Fluke's uh, fan musing. It, it, I have no words to describe <laughs> what we saw. I literally said to E, I was like, oh, have you seen that poster where like. Omen Fluke are like police slash detectives, and I tried to find it. And in in the midst of trying to find this poster, I found the teaser trailer for their fan meet, and I was like, "Oh, this is a whole thing. What what is this?" They've done like a full concept. I can't. It the implication is that there is going to be some kind of performance. That is related to this whole other story that they have created in the trailer. Yeah, but I don't know whether like a SWAT. w e r e detectives. Detectives. That's, that's, that's what it looks like. It looks like a full Brooklyn Nine Nine, fully like, action situation. But how how's this going to be incorporated into their fan meet? And what exactly is their fan meet going to kind of be about? Right. It like it it low key seemed like it was suggesting. Um, What's it called? Like an immersive theatre experience. I mean, <laughs> so, like, I'd so I mean? be down with that. that would I would pay cool. for that. I would go to a fan meet if it was going to be an immersive theatre experience. Right. If anyone's Funny. listening to this and has a subbed version because we watched it with very little idea about what's actually being said, please let us know because I mean, you can guess. Oh yeah, there was a, a <laughs> car crash yeah. <laughs> that neither of them tried to move half the way of, even though they saw it coming from quite a significant distance. Like, is this going to be an actual on-stage kind of new series? Right, thing? Like, are they, is, is it a play? Is it, <laughs> it going to be a play? I would love. Or that. is this just going to be like the theme of the fan meet? Are they going to be, I don't know, dressed dressed as cops? Like, and do like a dance about it? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We can we can dream. We can. <laughs> we'll find out on the twenty eighth of November. I think that's when it's meant to happen. Oh my so. Goodness. Looking forward to that. Okay, so your Thai BL news of the last two weeks. Let's hear it. Well, it's not really the last two weeks. I have news on here that's been happening for quite a while, but you know, some of it has to get cut out of the episode in order <laughs> for it to, you know, not be too long. So some of this news might be old news by now, but we haven't talked about it yet. So I know you didn't end up watching Roommate. The no, not mini yet. series. I loved Roommate, the mini series. Um, it is being renewed for a season two. Oh, so it's, it did pretty well then. Oh, Good. it did very well. It uh, when it each episode like hit a million views. The company made a point of saying, "Oh, look, this episode has a million views now. Look how well it's doing." And uh, they they have been given a second series. Um, whether this means it's another mini series or whether it means it. Might be a bit of a bulkier series. We don't know. I hope they give them more because the mini series really just scratched the surface. I mean, they had a whole bit in the middle where it was basically a montage of them getting closer mm. because they they didn't have time to like give us that journey. Mm. They they had to like really compress it down into a tiny montage, and you know that was. Understandable, but um, if it was a full series, that would have been the bulk of the series. Their their whole journey into getting to know each other and falling in love with each other, which we didn't get. So I'm kind of hoping that a second series will mean more episodes, longer episodes, bigger budget, um, so that 
we can continue this relationship because it was a really lovely mini series that had a good strong concept but just couldn't explore it far enough yeah and hopefully as well because it seems like from the bit that i've seen um i don't think they had a super high budget for it and they were doing things at kind of as low key as as as, as they could and it would be really cool to see maybe in season two a bit of higher production value not to say that anything they made was bad but just you know you can you can tell when um, a production company is able to put a bit more a bit more money into the show and it sounds like it deserves it so that would be really cool okay so next on the agenda is the theory of love special episode that came out of absolutely fucking nowhere yeah oh. i mean i mean it was announced maybe was it i don't even know how far in advance it was announced not very far not very far at all and i don't think a lo- we knew it was coming no we 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 basically thought theory of love was dead and buried like right. that was it we weren't really getting anything else and then bam special episode that no one really asked for i no, guess but, like, but very well i'll take it yeah, yeah i'll take it <laughs> Thank whatever you. um we watched it together um what did what did you think of it we didn't really talk that much about it it was it was it was cute it it was fun i i'm a bit disappointed that it was as so many sort of like oh we've talked about this before like second season syndrome sort of thing where a whole like oh cheating is sort of the it it wasn't really the story this is not a spoiler it wasn't really the storyline but like that was the kind of theme of it was like infidelity or which it was it was relevant it was the half-assed um conflict yeah that they went for and i would have liked to see if they were going to do a conflict something a bit different but they didn't it wasn't overly dramatic in the way that some other shows have done it and it had a really wholesome ending and it was very cute and it was really sweet and it's just nice to see off and gun together and they have such good chemistry so yeah i mean am i gonna really remember it i don't think so i don't think it's it's a memorable special episode i mean even now i'm struggling to kind of remember most of it (laughs) um i mean not a great deal happened really no that's what it is like if if you do a special episode you have to either dedicate yourself to an episode of major issues and conflict or go the other way and just be a lovely episode with lots of cute content right and i think they decided to go more with the second so Mm. and i don't hate that it just means that uh, it was it was some cute off gun content and not a lot more. Yeah, you know, basically. So, um, admin G, that is me. Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> um, I will be doing this episode's hot topic. Another, not a heavy one. I wouldn't call it heavy. I think it's an important um, topic, especially for all of us because we are fans and we are online fans, and so. When we asked on our account, on our Instagram account, what you would like to hear from us, um, what you want us to talk about, like um, serious things that you want to hear about to do with the community. And more than one of you suggested how fans can sometimes be a bit toxic, um, behaving how they shouldn't be behaving. And um, I had, I have a lot of thoughts about this because um, personally, I don't like to consider myself a fan of people. I admire people and their work. I would consider myself part of a fan base or a fan community, like the, the Thai BL community or just the BL community. Um, I like the word community, basically. So I think this way of thinking that I have um, kind of contributes to the fact that my mindset is very much, would I like this kind of behaviour if it were me? If I was this person that had a lot of fans, would I enjoy what these fans are kind of saying to me or behaving towards me? And that's how I kind of like to live my life just to be like, um, if I wouldn't like it done to me, then I shouldn't be doing it to someone else. Mm. You know, that's my kind of way of thinking. So with that in mind, I would like to open with um, the fact that shipping is a staple in any fan community. I mean, it's unavoidable and I have no problem with shipping. 
And I don't think anyone should have a problem with shipping. From shipping comes fan clubs, uh, fan accounts, fan fix, and fan art. And, you know, that's um, a way for people to be creative and um, channel their feelings. So I think it's actually a very healthy way to express yourself. And um, shipping can be, you know, a beautiful thing that brings people together. I mean, we've all been brought together um, (laughs) through the BL community. Exactly. But that is, as long as it doesn't turn toxic. Now, I think you all know what toxic fan means. I don't think I have to explain that to anyone. But it can become a vicious cycle of actors, you know, getting hired. Um, A popular ship is born. The company utilises the popularity by pushing the ship. Uh, Then fans shipping even harder out of that. And then companies further taking advantage of that and then on and on it goes in this you know unending cycle yeah and um it can be quite hard for an actor if you kind of put yourself in in their shoes Uh, and from this cycle can come problems if you think about it it can be both for fans and for actors that these problems can occur so let's talk about kind of like problems that actors could face from this Hmm. Uh, let's start with um, lack of freedom. Oh gosh, yeah, that is a big one. So um, I've kind of said a lot <laughs> um, so far. So if you're following, um, what what are your views on kind of um, this vicious cycle that I've said and um, how the lack of freedom can affect the actor? I feel like particularly, in- interestingly, I feel like all fandoms suffer from from this and everyone has um to varying degrees in fan communities certain expectations that are external from the core product of what's been made like the media or the the tv show or whatever um that is projected onto the actors and the bl community particularly the thai bl community i think is unique in that it's one of the first industries that I've seen like you said that just heavily market on that extra like the fans going the extra mile that extra kind of like expectation that you put on the actor and I think that we I mean we talked about this a bit but when we were talking about F4 and Brightwin and how I mean technically yes do they have like the ability to go on and do other projects that they're not together in yeah because we've seen that but then on top of that, there was a huge fan backlash um, and there is a lack of freedom there in being able to kind of just like pursue other projects, do other things, because there is this massive expectation that has been not just... Cre- I mean, this is the other thing maybe you'll mention as well, but fans don't... It, it's not like a self-created problem. There are toxic fans who make their own issues, but also in TyBL, the companies they're banking on the fact that people are going to go extra hard and become obsessed Mm -hmm. and potentially toxic uh, because it means they'll sell more, it means people will be more hyped about it, people will talk more about it. Yeah, I mean, um, you've definitely touched on the lack of freedom in their career. Right. Um, I've got a lot of thoughts about the lack of freedom in their personal life. So I want you all to imagine for me, you're, you're an actor and your career suddenly just blows up out of nowhere because of one series. Uh, You've been dropped into this new life of having to now watch your every move. You need to run a lot of your life past your management. You need to carefully think about what you say and what you put on social media. Your personal life is thrust into the spotlight. I mean, it's just a brand, it's a brand new way of having to live your life and not necessarily a better way of living your life. I mean, not even being able to have full freedom with your social media account. Like, imagine having to create a a brand new kind of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and some of these actors don't even run them themselves. I mean, they'll probably have, like, social media assistants Mm. who do it for them because that is a job you can you can be a social media runner for for someone and on top of that we as fans won't always know what's happening behind the scenes as well so on top of all the this loss of freedom that we we can kind of see is happening 
there's also the stuff we don't see and you know that's kind of like the scary side of it really like we we don't really know what's happening behind closed doors one of the examples i have of kind of lack of freedom or kind of like fan toxicity taken to a whole new level is when um is when wang yibo's um phone number was leaked or it was sold even like i think someone was like selling his number to people and he had that whole thing of just like constantly getting calls from people and texts from people and um he had to get a completely new number and um it was a big deal because like he did a lot of his business from that phone like he had to change a lot of his accounts and basically everything that was on the phone he needed to change and um it was imagine ha- that happening to you imagine your personal phone number getting out right and having that lack of privacy the- and these people were meant to be his fans you know you're meant to be a fan of his and yet you're purchasing a private number and calling him like why what what do you think that is going to come of that so um do you have any um thoughts or examples about this it strikes me as being something very familiar to me as someone who also likes um k-pop not in a big way but i'm gonna i'm maybe gonna get this wrong but sasangs which is like the korean word for like a stalker fan this kind of thing with the selling phone numbers um people stalking them and selling like flight information and things that they're on um is a really big deal for k-pop stars and obviously seems to be happening kind of bleeding into other areas um beyond the music industry and i it's super creepy (laughs) i mean it's just something that doesn't even register with me i i can't fathom why you would want to do that with someone you admire so much i think there is a, a like a desire for some people and I understand this because I can get this way as well to want to know as much as you can about a person and that's part of being being a fan is just this dedication to like knowledge about them and for some people that starts to transgress into knowledge about their personal life in like where they are who they're speaking to what they're doing that other people don't get to see and that is like very uncomfortable to me it just um is not healthy or safe or legal most of it (laughs) absolutely you you might be faced with a decision of like oh this person's number is available like but they didn't make it available so um do i take this number and message them and you know invade their privacy or do i back off maybe report it and that's that's the the boundary i'm talking about like you need to know what's right and wrong in that situation like i was for an, for example when i was like 13 years old 14 13 14 i was a big big fan of panic the disco and i still am but we're talking like 2005 right when they released and although i would like to consider myself having always been a fairly mature and sensible person If I had access to the kind of information or the kind of data or just just generally content that like teenagers now do for some of these actors, I probably would. I don't think I ever would have crossed into this territory, but I think I probably could have gotten a little bit toxic, a little bit too obsessive because there's just so much like and when you just have that available to you and no one's really talking about like what's appropriate because there aren't the hard like physical boundaries of it, you can just access it. Like that takes a lot of self regulation. The internet just blurs all boundaries of like what's public, personal, what's shareable, what shouldn't be shared, what's private, and it, it's a mess. Along with a certain loss of freedom, um, this way of living can bring about a change in mental health as well. So, without naming anyone in particular, because um, that that wouldn't be nice. Yeah, but not <laughs> we just should, being gossipy. We shouldn't be naming and shaming people, especially when, like I said, we don't know what exactly happens behind closed doors so um i've seen examples of fans being concerned about an actor acting differently or not looking healthy however it could be because of the attention of the fan base that these changes in the actor are happening making comments especially about someone's looks um it can not for everyone i think a lot of actors do just kind of um live their life and you know see these comments and can deal with it but 
there will be people who won't be able to deal with that kind of attention, like aggressive attention, like mm. s- as well as other people. Um, so, for example, someone constantly commenting on a specific attribute of a person. I've seen this a lot in the BL community. Um, even if it's meant to be positive, which mostly it is, it's meant to be like an endearing thing, it can give that person a complex. Right. Now, like- I think it's a very slippery slope and it is a slope that is easy to get on, especially if thousands of other fans are also pointing it out. It might, it would probably draw attention to it for them and maybe not in a good way. So that in turn can lead to, you know, body image problems or insecurities about their personality. As I've been saying through this whole thing, imagine if that was you, if you started suddenly getting thousands of people saying that, oh, your nose looks a certain way. Right. Whereas you've never kind of considered your nose to be like... Out any any kind of way before and suddenly loads of people are commenting on it like that 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 could change your state of mind and from there it could start going downhill you know like mm. i'm not saying commenting on your idols is a bad thing absolutely comment on a picture of your idol saying that they look great like that's good if you if you comment i i guess if you if you comment on every single Instagram post that someone does, like, oh, your thumbs. <laughs> your thumbs are sexy, I don't know. Or just like, wow, like drawing attention to something. I guess you could talk about thirst tweets in in this kind of context. Um, I'm not saying thirst tweets are a bad thing. I'm saying they can get quite strange. So <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess what I'm saying is if you want to comment on your favourite actor and how they look or how they act... Just don't make it weird. Yeah, or too directed towards them. Like, I think it's completely fine to have, like, fun conversations with your other in real life or online friends, particularly if it's in, like, a private space, like a group chat, or if you're, like, having a face-to-face conversation with someone. Like, go wild. Talk, you know, (laughs) I'm not saying just objectify them all you want, you know, within reason. But um, that's very different to tagging them over and over again in some, like, very intense objectifying posts or you know that there is there is a I think a good measure would be if you're if you would be embarrassed to say that to them face to face in real life like they're looking at you Mm -hmm. not an icon there's like no um no facade nothing there to protect Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. if you would feel weird conveying that to them in real life it's probably a little bit inappropriate um to be to be like tagging them in it or uh, you know addressing it directly to them online as well that's why it's good to have a community i guess exactly like, if you can find a small group of friends who you can kind of share these things with and not get judged then maybe do that and kind of get all that energy out of the way and then you'll just have the positive kind of healthy kind of energy left yeah exactly I just wanted to give like maybe a couple of examples of toxic fan behavior if if you're still struggling a bit or if you're a bit confused still. So I've written down here wishing your stands only work for each other mm. or with each other. So you kind of touched on this with Bright Win. Um I think it's also the same for Mew Golf. Yeah. Definitely. Um those are two very strong ships that have a lot of followers. You you shouldn't be limiting these actors to just working with each other i mean right and if you feel again if you feel very passionately that you would only like them to work together you don't have to watch the other things they're in and you also don't have to direct that energy to them personally that can go in your private group chat it could go in your real life conversations you know so my second example is um specifically for fans and fan behavior towards each other starting arguments with people who don't share the same opinion as you. I've put in little brackets here. You should only stand up for an actor if someone is trying to slander or defame them. Actors can usually defend themselves against trolls. Now, this is... um, I can think of another Yubo example for this, actually. When when, um, Yubo had that um, accident in his latest race. Oh, my gosh. His latest motorbike race. Um... A lot of people got upset with the person who 
may or may crash. yeah may or may not have you know caused the crash on purpose but again we don't know we don't have you know um evidence of that so we can't definitively say that's what happened um but there was a crash i noticed that um obviously a lot of yiba's fans took to the socials and was defending him and like um being very aggressive towards this um other motorcyclist um and he did respond well he responded his team responded i guess with a statement basically saying we can deal with this ourselves thanks yeah. <laughs> i think that was really funny yeah. cuz like that's what it is like um this is something that happened to him he, he and his team are dealing with it and what it is is he doesn't want you to get involved because he cares about you and this kind of behavior online can lead to um unhealthy behavior and um maybe even further you know it could be um dangerous to kind of start beef with someone online you don't know right I mean, you don't know where that's going to lead to so that's where it comes from it comes from a pa- place of love but ultimately yes like they can usually stick up for themselves and i think sometimes people forget that it can be getting particularly in that example you gave with the with the motorcycle accident i think understandable but very intense involvement of the fans in criticizing this other guy potentially made it more difficult for him in real life to actually resolve it and um a statement did have to be released and if people perhaps were more concerned with spreading support for him on social media and saying and there was a great deal of this being like we still support you you did a good job instead of sending like literal death threats to this other guy which did happen like in a considerable way um it maybe would have been a bit less of a headache for him to deal with and so um, i've written a closing statement here that i think sums up um my thoughts particularly and um, probably a lot of ease as well uh, we're on the same page about most of this i yeah. think <laughs> um so how to be a good fan you can be supportive you can ship them you can compliment them just remember they're a human and to treat them like you would want to be treated they get enough crap to deal with from press uh from management from you know haters and uh if you really are their fan you will take into account what makes them uncomfortable so you know if the actor flat out says on social media that they don't like what their fans are doing then you should probably stop doing it you know because yeah. <laughs> that means you hun that means you you're a fan there is a kind of bitter sweet reason that most actors who are shipped together create such strong bonds of friendship and it's probably because that they're being the other one's main support system to be honest um when it comes to the sheer amount of attention they they receive i mean who better to kind of help you through all that than your shipmate right eh? <laughs> literally <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think that's what it comes down to i mean we 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 like to um kind of pretend or like nitpick at their relationships and kind of say oh they're real they must be real cuz look at da 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 um when really in real life they're probably just very very close because they have to deal with you know us being like this i mean it's a kind of bittersweet thing to think about but at right. the end of the day that think that's what it comes down to yeah and if they are together i mean just like the sheer amount of scrutiny you're getting anyway that would be intense like there's no ideal situation for them i think just um just be nice guys be nice online be supportive always and um treat people like human beings yeah that's that's basically what it comes down to okay now we're on to the part of the podcast where we are going to play a game um be a bit slightly more stupid than we were in the last <laughs> half an hour um we decided today we're going to do the whisper challenge again um since people enjoyed it before as always we have our lovely guest t hi there um today abby and g is going to supply the phrases and me and t are going to battle each other uh listeners might know that me and t are a couple and so this is either going to go really well or extremely poorly Mm. so let's find out are you ready we could be witnessing the end of a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope not. Yeah, fingers crossed. Not, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but we can't get the money back from the wedding, so we're going to have to go through with it either way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right, then. I've got um, six prompts, so it's going to be three each. Um, I would like to start with uh, T whispering to E. Okay. So if E can Have get... you personalised the prompts? Possibly. Okay. Oh, I think this is probably the best order to do them. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with the first phrase. T, this is going to be your phrase for E. <laughs> I mean, he is, though. Starting off strong, yeah? Okay, let's go. Okay. Uh, if you, you ready? Tell, tell, the, tell the mic okay. first. I'm ready. All right. I'll look away. Oh, my <laughs> the first prompt we're going to do today is, Wei Wushan should have been the top. Are you ready? Wei Wushan. Wei Wushan. Should have been the top. Shot me in the top. Should have been the top. Say it again. Wei Wushan. Wei Wushan. Right. Should have been the top. Should have been the top. Where we yep. should, should have been Bingo. the top. And this comes straight from <laughs> my brain. <laughs> um, if any of you, you know, have seen The Untamed, you know that Lan Jan's a bottom. I just, I'm, I'm putting it out on the internet. <laughs> this is a controversial opinion. Very controversial. Any time we have stated preference for who is a top and bottom on the meme page, mm-hmm. it has caused some healthy debate. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, do you know what, <clears throat> listeners? I don't care. <laughs> That boy is a bottom. <laughs> no, sorry, but no one pines for sixteen years and learns how to play a magic. What's it called? It's a ging ging shing. It's a it's a gu chin. But mm. actually, I learned today that gu just means ancient. So at the time, it would have just been called a chin. Oh, a, a relatively <laughs> new chin. <laughs> um, yeah, no one pines for sixteen years and learns to play an instrument um, for no reason, and that reason is being a bottom. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's that's a completely separate uh, podcast that we're going to start. It, yeah. it's called um... "Pining for Sixteen Years <laughs> and Being Mad as Hell About It." <laughs> the Land Jan story. Oh, I thought you meant um, we're going to start a new podcast where we argue controversial top and bottom opinions, which actually would I be mean, a fun spin off. That, that could be part of it, you know. All right. All right. That was way too easy, apparently. So I'm glad I've made these a bit longer. Okay. See, this is something that I would say, though. That's why. Yeah, that's what you got exactly. Right. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so um, don't shame me. This is going to be your phrase. Okay, I'm ready. When your boyfriend tells people he's not gay. When your boyfriend. My boyfriend. When your boyfriend. When you're my boyfriend. <laughs> tells people. Tells people that he's not gay. That he's not gay. Oh, you got. When my boyfriend tells people that he's not gay. No, do that slow though. Do it slow. When my boyfriend. When my boyfriend <laughs> tells people. Tells people that he's not. He's gay. not gay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, you got this it. Is so easy. This is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might have to add on a couple. <laughs> <laughs> How is this too easy? Is can, you really can't hear each other? No, I couldn't no. hear you at all. Maybe you should be further away. From each other. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Or make it just more complicated. I mean, the thing is, we we are a couple. Okay, this <clears throat> this next one might be harder. Okay. Welcome to the Ohm Flute Detective Agency. Welcome to the Ohm Flute Detective Agency. <laughs> what? Say, say it again. Welcome. Well. I'm not finished. Oh, okay. Welcome. To- <laughs> Did you get that one? <laughs> Welcome to the Ohm Fluke Detective Agency. Welcome to the Ohm Fluke Detective Agency. Well, the that's a, I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> welcome to Well Welcome. Well the Welcome. Welcome to the to to the the Ohm Fluke Whole Foods. Ohm <laughs> Welcome to the Whole Foods. Ohm Home Ohm Homo Ohm Welcome to the Homo. Ohm. <laughs> Welcome to the hole. <laughs> You're going to need to try a different type. Ohm fluke. The oval. Welcome to the oval. Fluke. Ohm fluke. Welcome to the whole food. <laughs> so what you say. It's not whole oh, food. Wait, 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 wait. Turn it up. Start from the beginning and don't speak. Don't speak. Don't speak. <laughs> Welcome to. Welcome to. The ohm fluke. Ohm. The ohm. Ohm fluke. Ohm fluke. Detective. Taste test. Detective. Tent. Duh. Welcome to the own fluke. Detective. Tent of. Detective. Dog. Detective 
agency. Detective agency. Bingo. Welcome to the yes. only detective agency. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was a good one. I was like, I was like, T E is gonna understand this, but you won't. Yeah. <laughs> Challenge for <clears throat> listeners at home. Look in the mirror and whisper, Welcome to the Ohm Fluke, and it, it will look like welcome to the Whole Foods. Just want, <laughs> want people to know. Oh, Get god. crazy in this whole okay. Foods. <laughs> All right, I'll... So um this is the next prompt. Okay, I'm going to have to hold this. That's fine. Right. It's a long one. Creating a couple called Tin Can was a galaxy brain move. Creating a couple called Tin Can was a galaxy brain move. Creating a couple called Tin Can was a galaxy brain move. I have no idea. <laughs> Go on. Creating a couple called Great Tin Great couple. Ca- took me. Called Tin Can. Horses. <laughs> Creating a couple. Green couple. Creating... Lady. Creating. Crazy. <laughs> Creating. You're crazy. <laughs> Creating. Creating. That's not a word. <laughs> Creating. <laughs> Creating. Crazy. Creating. Creative. Go close. Creating. Creating. Yes. A couple. A couple. Called Tin Can. Called ZK. <laughs> Fucking CK. Called Tin Can. Called Sexy. <laughs> Called Tin Can. Called Teeny Teeny. <laughs> Called. Called Tin Can. Cosina. <laughs> Called. Called. Tin. Stinky. Tin- no. Stink. Tin- no. Tin. I'm not saying stink. I'm not saying stink. It looks like you're stink. Tin. Sin. Tin. Sounds like sin. Tin. Tin. Skin. There's no S. Where's the S going from? Tin. Shin. (laughs) No S. Tin. (laughs) No S. I'm oh not making an S sound with my mouth. Wait, tin. Cre- creating a couple. Called tin can. Tin, called tin can. Tin can. Yes. <laughs> was a galaxy. This brain. more? Yes. <laughs> was a galaxy brain move. With his brain removed. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it? Was a galaxy brain move. with no chemistry involved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a galaxy with a skeleton. <laughs> Galaxy. Catsky. Oh my god. Galaxy. Jealousy. No. Galaxy. Ga. Ka. Galaxy. Cala- cala- callus. Galaxy. Chemistry. Galaxy. Galaxy. Brain. Yes. Galaxy brain move. <gasps> Creating a couple called Tin Can is a galaxy brain moment. Yes. 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 Close, Close enough. enough. <laughs> I'm taking it. Fuck. <laughs> I genuinely, I genuinely wasn't Where playing. were you getting that S from? You could say S going, words. No, no, no. I was going T, T, T. Was, you were going... Oh, God. No, I was going T. I was going S. We'll have to play that this back. You're making kid. the exact same face. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I'm really we know the English language and the mouth shapes we have to make are bizarre. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. Let the record that show really made me laugh. that my diction was very clear. I just went, Corsina. <laughs> you literally started speaking a different language. <laughs> I was like, is she speaking in tongues? <laughs> Has she been possessed? Well, <laughs> stranger things have happened. It did take five years of Spanish. <laughs> I thought that was going to be an explanation. Of- <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. So, um, here is the phrase for tea. Okay. 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 So, <clears> say so the phrase is, I'm telling you, new looks like Ferris Bueller. I'm ready. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. New. You. New. You. N- say, n- say, it all the way through, say it all the way through. I'm telling you, new looks like Ferris Bueller. <laughs> I'm telling you, you've got a very small ass. <laughs> no. uh, not it. I'm telling you, new. I'm telling you, you. New. You. New. Lose. N. U. Two. N. Sue. New. Do. New. Glue. New. You. Looks like. Look like. Looks like. Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. I, I can just see very small ass. Oh no. Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller! Yeah. I'm telling you, you look like Ferris Bueller. New. No. New. No. I'm telling you, 
New. Oh. Looks like Ferris Bueller. Who's the one that looks like Ferris Bueller? New. 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 Fluke. New. Luke. New. New. Yes. I'm telling you, New looks like Ferris Bueller. Fuck, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I spat everywhere when I was saying Grace Small Ass and made myself laugh. I can't believe you forgot his name. And we were mouthing it to you and you were still forgetting his name. So this is the final phrase. A nice, simple one. <clears throat> okay. You can't believe you're making me say this, G. <laughs> we don't fuck with the incest trope. <laughs> Once this, again. This is going to be a fun one. We don't fuck with the incest trope. Okay. We don't fuck with the incest trope. We couldn't throw away this trash. <laughs> <laughs> we don't fuck with the incest trope. We couldn't vote in Trump? No. Oh, God. <laughs> we don't. We don't. Fuck with. Fuck with. The incest. These gays. <laughs> the, the incest. We don't fuck with... Incest. Incest. Trope. Trope. Trope? We don't fuck with the incest trope. We don't fuck with the incest trope. Yay! That's right! <laughs> advice, to, advice to live by. <laughs> we do not. We didn't vote in Trump and we <laughs> do not fuck we with the incest fuck with trope. These gays. <laughs> You um, literally said that in, in an episode of the podcast, yeah. Here I am thinking, ew. <laughs> oh, it came from my brain. Oh. <laughs> okay, so as usual, that was a lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, we finished. Oh, we're done. Yeah, that was it. Uh, they, were, they were so easy. It, Some of them are difficult. Yeah, we had a few hard ones. <laughs> we thought it would be fun to just uh, have a recommendation each uh, for you guys. Maybe something... Uh, Western queer related, uh, maybe something not BL, but maybe has BL tropes or themes or just in the realm of stuff that we think you might enjoy. Yeah. Um, so what is your recommendation? So I'm going with, um, I haven't finished it yet, but um, we've recently been watching Guardian. Again, you can watch it on Vicky. It's about 40 episodes. It's um, uh, another Chinese BL adjacent, kind of like The Untamed. So it was adapted from a um, uh, a Dan May, um, a Chinese BL novel. And it's more of like a bromance vibe, but it's strong so far. Uh, the best way I can describe it <laughs> is Chinese Torchwood. <laughs> but it's like, it's a really fun sci-fi sort of fantasy sort of series it's set in modern times and is sort of about a team um who investigate paranormal things um but particularly the relationship ambiguous relationship between the two male leads who may or may not have known each other in many past lives it's it's very difficult to explain anyway it's really good fun there are some darker moments in it but on the whole it's really silly and enjoyable and it's kind of quirky and i would i would really recommend um that that you check it out yeah so speaking of uh chinese torchwood <laughs> um i would actually like to recommend uh the ser- the english series torchwood it is not exclusively a bl um i know some of you might be upset that we are not recommending exclusively B- bls but i feel like broadening your mind is yeah. not a bad thing um and Torchwood is interesting because um, if you're not aware of the origins of Torchwood, it is basically a spin-off of Doctor Who. So um, was it in the noughties or was it in the... I think it must have been in the noughties because I remember it being around like David Tennant, Doctor Who time. Mm -hmm, And that was definitely when we were like in in our early to Mm mid-teens. So quite a while back now yeah um they did a spin-off of doctor who uh called torchwood and the main character is a kind of side character from doctor who uh he was in um a few episodes he was quite a he was quite a main character at one point in doctor who and he was a big fan favorite and um that is captain jack harkness so basically they gave him his own spin-off series where he goes off to wales of all places, <laughs> of course, and um, starts his own kind of little company, his little underground kind of gang, who basically 
when the doctor is not around, which happens quite a lot, they are the ones who deal with any kind of alien activity or anything supernatural that is happening on Earth, uh, especially in the UK. And um, that, that is basically what it is. It's an episode by episode, um, usually a different monster each time. But in uh, the series, um, it is well known that Captain Jack Harkness is um, very promiscuous. <laughs> and the actor John Barrowman has said himself that he sees the character as being something called a uh, omnisexual as he calls it and what he basically means by that is he is attracted to anything that breathes i think he he doesn't <laughs> care the gender he doesn't care the species sp- species like in in relation to aliens yeah. so like he doesn't care if it's an alien sh- species um if he finds it attractive then he will go for it he is very open like that and I think that was a very interesting thing especially for when this came out um, to have for a character and they do play around with it quite a lot in Torchwood Um, there's one episode where one of his ex um, partners slash lovers (laughs) comes back after what like they have not seen each other for a while Um, for some reason they're fighting Um, who knows I can't remember (laughs) they're fighting and then they, all of a sudden they just start making out um thank you bbc yes thank you bbc like for that loveliness <laughs> um a lot of his relationships are shown as queer um he does eventually get into a relationship with uh one of the other male characters and it wasn't really made a big deal out of and um that was a very a very big step i think it was um, really progressive for, for the time for tv yeah. for the time and uh I would definitely recommend if you like anything supernatural and a little bit queer uh, t- to check Torchwood out because it has some it has some questionable episodes <laughs> which I feel like most series do uh, a little bit cheesy but um, some episodes go very deep and have very good writing um, it's very enjoyable um, if you're based in the UK uh, it is all up on BBC iPlayer now, so you can watch it on BBC iPlayer. For international fans, I I suppose you can kind of shop around online and see if anywhere else is... Um, it might be on something like BritBox. I know that's a new thing. Possibly. But possibly. Uh, if, if it's probably you, on YouTube, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> if you're particularly interested but can't find it, just DM us and we'll help as best we can. We'll, we'll hook we'll you have, up. We'll have a look around as With well. With those good links, yeah. The uh, um, Chinese Torchwood and Torchwood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Guardian and Torchwood, check them out. And if you do, let us know. We would love to know what you think of them. So we also run Thai BL memes over on Instagram and our podcast-specific account is That Such BL Podcast, where you can follow us for updates and extra content. So you'll be able to listen to future episodes on our Instagram, That Such BL Podcast, um, on IGTV, or you'll be able to find it on um, any major podcast platform like Apple Music, Spotify, or just the podcast app that you use. Thanks so much for listening.